This is going to be a quick video about this Lodestar attenuator box that I repaired myself. I found this in a trash can, and it had no back and a bunch of charred up resistors in here before I went in and made this mess that uh, is functional, despite how messy it looks. So, this was pretty old, found in a trash pile. It has end connectors on either end, and an assortment of switches that allows me to switch in an attenuation between 0 and 81 dB. Uh, in any increment within that range. So each of these switches switches in series a resistive pi network, which will cause that many dB of attenuation in the power flowing through it. Now, the resistors inside were so charred up that I couldn't read the resistor bands, and any of them that I could sort of read, uh, they were non-standard values, so I wasn't going to find them for free in the stock room. So I had to recalculate some of the resistor values for the Pi network attenuators in here, and I wrote a Mathematica script to do that that we'll take a look inside the magic box at in just a second. And then I handpicked these resistors from the stock room such that their series and parallel combinations would add up to the right resistances for this attenuator. Now, this thing works reasonably okay, but I wouldn't go using it for like UHF frequencies because it's uh, kind of a mess in there with the resistors and parasitic reactances are going to cause a huge issue there. Also, just looking at these switches, like even these straight connectors, these are pretty long when you start talking about higher frequencies. But for HF, this should be just fine. Now, these resistors are rated for quarter watt. You would have to calculate the individual uh, power distribution of each of these resistors to determine what the actual wattage rating of this was. But the original resistors in here were also quarter watt, and they've rated it for 0.5 watts. So I think that's a fair rating to say that this still has. So inside the magic box, a couple comments about everything that had to be done to get this thing working again. Uh, first, I needed to make a back for it. So I drew up a quick sketch in OpenSCAD, tried to inset these screws, didn't bother getting it to be a perfect circle. I just went with whatever it approximated a circle as for both these points. And I tried to inset the screws so that they wouldn't protrude from the back and it would be perfectly flat. Now this was like the most obscure US hardware it possibly could have been. It it was something like a dash fifty six. I don't I don't remember the screw size, but it was ridiculously hard to find. So these were whatever the instrument room um, in the basement of Reber could uh, find for me. Now the instrument room is since dissolved, or at least they were dissolving in the spring, but if they still exist they were a great place to get screws while well, they were around. Uh, so I, I really don't think I could acquire more of those easily, and these pan heads do end up sticking out of this guy anyway. They're too big for the insets. But this back worked out reasonably okay, and then I did need adapters from the end connectors to the SMAs that I'm going to be using most of the time. Now, I could have used an online calculator for the next bit where I needed to calculate the resistance values that I was going to put in for a Pi network. You can see there's three equations, three constraints, which basically are going to boil down to I want the input impedance from the left to be whatever, and the input impedance from the right to be whatever. In our case, we're going to want 50 ohms and 50 ohms. And then the other bit is I want the voltage in over the voltage out to be a given ratio to give you the amount of attenuation that you want. So I was suffering through a lovely physics course that was forcing us to use Mathematica at the time. And Mathematica is actually not terrible for this purpose, because uh, we can create a quick one-liner function. This is parallel, taking arguments x and y there, and it just computes the harmonic sum of the two numbers. And then we write in the three equations into the numeric solver function. I copied and pasted this code over and over again because that just worked, and I didn't feel like figuring out how to functionalize it again and then call that. But call the numeric solver on it, tell it to give you answers where their real solutions for 20, 10, 5, 3, 2, and 1 dB, and that spits out all the values that I need. We can check one or two of those with an actual calculator here. So we can go ahead and check that, and we just enter our data in here, 50, 50, input and output impedance, and 20 dB of attenuation, then we go ahead and get calculate. It'll give us resistor values. We see 61.11 and 247.5, and that's exactly what we calculated right here, 61 and 247.5. So with all that done, I went ahead and I handpicked resistors 
from the stock room and spent probably way too long measuring them uh, for series and parallel combinations that would get reasonably close, and I rebuilt the attenuator. So next we'll take a look at measuring it with the Nanovina V2 to see how accurate it ended up being. So we'll uh, take a look at the Nanovina V2's noise floor for an open circuit. You can see it's jumping around between minus 72 and minus 80 dB. So if we have signals that are attenuated by more than that, we're going to have trouble reading them. Also, looking at the return loss is perfect mismatch for open circuit right there. Now, go ahead and plug in the attenuator, and we'll take some measurements. Now I've had some issues with this attenuator, and the switch is not locking in where they should, and then my starting point will jump around, sometimes by a couple dB even. So we're going to avoid those switches that I know are kind of fussy first. So we're starting at minus 0.45 dB, and we'll start from the, the left, and we'll go to the right, and we're going to look at the 20 dB switches. So here's the first 20 dB switch. We could see an attenuation of minus 20.5 dB. We're at 30 megahertz here. And we could see that our, our return loss is very good, minus 32 dB. That's like a perfect matching on that one. When we switch the switch out, our return loss goes up to only like minus 13 dB. So we have less good matching without that switch in there and we also have less attenuation. Here's the second switch. See our return loss is minus 24.92 dB, so not as good a matching as the first switch when it switched in, but the attenuation is minus 20.33 dB, so still another good almost 20 dB attenuation there. Switch that out, and we'll switch in the third Pi network. Return loss minus 20.57 dB, all right, that's an acceptable matching. I think that I'm going left to right, and I'm getting further away from the initial port where I'm introducing the Pi network. I think that's transforming any small perturbation in the impedance there, and maybe making it worse. So we got you know, some weird effects with the its wires and switches, not transmission lines in here. And I'm pushing the upper end of HF with where I'm testing on purpose to demonstrate some of these effects. So here we'll switch that out. And this is a 10 dB. Our matching is minus 18.09 dB return loss and minus 10.28 dB attenuation there. Here's a 5 dB switch. Minus 5.25, pretty good. I'm going to skip the 3 dB switch because that one's been pretty fussy, and I'm going to skip the 2 because that's also been fussy. We'll check the 1 dB switch first. Okay, that's a little more than 1 dB. Minus 1.7, and we started at like 0.4. It's a little bit over, 1.3. I will do the 2 dB switch. Minus 2.31 from minus 0.3. Pretty good, but you notice that our start point did jump around. I told you these little switches are the fussy ones. And here's the 3 dB switch. This one's real fussy sometimes. So minus 0.3 to minus 3.3. Good stuff. We flip it back out. Minus 0.3. Didn't happen to move on us. Now, I've been fiddling with these a little bit late, lately, so maybe the corrosion inside the switches has uh, worn off a little bit, but this can be quite finicky. The construction in here is not exactly pretty. So what we're looking at is a jumbled mess of my stockroom hand-picked resistors, and look, this is what passes for the connection between... The other side of each of these switches now it could be worse right that's a nice straight wire and it looks like they made some effort to avoid jagged edges on the solder joints maybe more of an effort that than i made trying to melt their possibly not lead solder on this big metal heatsink doing that job but that's a working attenuator uh that i didn't have to pay for so that's nice so anyhow, if you like this video, please consider leaving a thumbs up or subscribing for more content.